Welcome to the joint presentation by Rutenberger and Parsonate. It is about the semi-automatic catalog generation, deliberately uh, semi-automatic. We've heard about automatic generation, but we said we cannot automate everything. And this is why we refer to this project as semi-automatic. And the title is From the Slipstream into the Fast Lane, Revolution of Catalog Generation at Rotenberger. It was not a revolution for the industry, but it was a revolution for Rotenberger. So first of all, my name is Patrick Nonweiler. I've worked uh, uh, as a senior business consultant uh, at um, Parsonate uh, uh, for 10 years and uh, for seven years for the Prince Suite. And I support with experts consulting and also with the implementation of the publishing projects. My name is Sebastian Seib. I am head of product data management at Rotenberger since uh, 2019. Before, I worked in agencies, uh, co developed PIM systems, and also implemented them for customers. And now at Rotenberger, I'm responsible for the PIM systems that we also use for our brands. And I'm also responsible for the project we're presenting today. First of all, on Rotenberger. Rotenberger is a machine tool manufacturer, has been around for 70 years. It was established in 1949 in Frankfurt. We uh, offer a full range uh, for aircon and heating and cold and uh, aircon and also tubing and hoses. So we have machinery for plastic tube welding and we always focus on the users. Um, the professionals basically decide uh, on our portfolio. We have a huge portfolio for this area, 6,000 products. Uh, In-house production stands at 70%, which is a very high percentage. We have seven production sites and around about uh, 1,600 employees and we sell in 120 countries. And the sales in 120 countries, we do not serve all of the 120 countries, but for the project we said, okay, we have developed a PIM system and implemented this PIM system. So we have 27 country and language versions and we want to roll them out. But before we talk about the project, c could you say a few words about uh, Parsonate? Yes, we at Parsonate actually support our customers in digital transformation and we've done so since 2013 and we implement projects and um, we also come up with completely new solutions while doing so and we always do this on the basis of data. We felt how important data is and this is why we have uh, referred to the data leadership. Um, in principle, on Parsonate, we have roughly 230 employees um, and we work for 250 different customers and we do so at five uh, locations. And we focus on strategy consulting and system integration. And um, we actually cooperate with many partners uh, such as Werk 2, but also with Contents of Informatica and many PIM suppliers, but also with many other partners. Exactly. Uh, well, let's now talk about the project and you can see the whole lecture um, will show analogies with the Looney Tunes. Just enjoy. What was the status quo when we kicked off with the project? We actually uh, broke it down into three areas. The status quo was as follows. We had already cooperated successfully with Parsonate. Uh, back then we picked the PIM system together with Parsonate and successfully implemented it with Parsonate for all of our country subsidiaries and even for some uh, brands that are under the Rotenberger umbrella. Status quo was the following. We knew, or rather, we had cooperated with Parsonate. We always had a PIM system, but that never lived up to our requirements to take us to the next level. And this is 
why the process um, is the most important thing. Uh, Wartenberger is very process driven. We have uh, processes for everything, thrive on it. But unfortunately, um, there were processes uh, that were not optimal. One process was the catalog generation. This was uh, kept in parallel with the article images uh, online and uh, this was handled by marketing in parallel, so to speak. So parallel processes and this had to be processed. We knew this from the outset and we wanted to do the CareBag team, did the catalog and the online team uh, did the websites with PIM. And we wanted to bring these two together. Technology is also an important point. We have implemented ContentSurf as a PIM system and uh, with us, our catalog is product specific. All uh, of the other uh, images are article specific. We had a PIM system and for the online segment, all of the uh, information was informed, but not so much for the print area. So we knew lots of work still to be done. Then people, uh, they are also an important component. Our graphic arts team, the catalog is the masterminds behind the catalog is the uh, graphic arts team. It was built over many, many years, and we said there will be semi automatic catalog automation. There was an outcry catalog at the push of a button. Uh, there was lots of fear. We said, no, it's only semi automatic. You can continue working. We did many internal workshops, but then also defined our target and described our targets in the various workshops and we knew exactly we want to automate as far as possible but in some areas we can't do it 100%. We were aware of this and this is why we said semi-automatic from the outset and we wanted to have standards. Standards uh, that uh, allow us to actually lay down standardized processes and live by them. Uh, scaling, very important, like with the PIM system, we had a beacon project that we started and rolled it out uh, via the uh, country subsidiaries down to all of the brands. And this is exactly what we wanted to do with catalog production. Then the approach for solution, and I'll hand over to Patrick. The um, We at Parsonate um, together with uh, Rotenberger, um, joined forces and looked uh, how we can best implement this project. So which concept is the best one? And we actually focused on the topics that we heard before. Uh, we wanted to focus on people, processes and the technology because the most important thing is that you do not leave behind the people um, that are behind the project and that, uh, that the people are not simply presented with a new solution and have to live with it. And these people then don't know what to do with it. And this is why it is so important for us to not leave the people behind. How did we do that? Well, in, we kicked off during the COVID uh, um, situation. The uh, workshops took place online, which also worked out well. We always uh, looked for direct exchange. And during the workshops, um, we actually specified the various requirements for the various uh, catalogs. We analyzed uh, two, you know, three different catalog types and uh, laid down in writing the uh, requirements. Um, we actually drew up a best practice for this, looked at the various modules and then implemented them piece by piece. It starts with the first installation of a system, then the first data connection content serve linked with the print so that the both that the two can talk to each other, which cannot take and be for granted. Then uh, content serve is a cloud environment, a ZARS environment, and we made sure that we could uh, um, import the images that the assets were synchronized. So we built this solution gradually. We created placeholders and templates. We took the first little steps and then we provided Rotenberger with this and Rotenberger could then um, use these little increments we provided 
to try out the solution. It's not the complete solution, but you can see immediately what's the output, how does the solution react, and you can learn how to work with it. And the most important thing is that you create confidence. How can I later uh, produce my catalogs? And uh, how will I work later? What's in it for me? And we had to take away the fear for employees. Um, they were afraid of losing their jobs. Will this all be rationalized? No, of course, this would not be the case. And this is why it is important to be in a direct exchange and um, uh, actually uh, always customize the message for Rotenberger. What's also important is uh, data security. At this point, of course, we actually have the benefit that we get everything from a single source. Internally, we implemented the content serve, the PIM content serve with the colleagues and identified right away whether there are any factors that need to be considered that are probably not covered by the PIM system. And there were some little issues, but it was not a problem really to, to put this into practice. And then we also defined a test data set and made sure that it includes all of the use cases that the catalogs should cover later and then test these against uh, uh, what is in there, what will be output, are there possible transformations in the data and this is how we progressed uh, gradually. And data security is really an important topic. And we focused on this right from the outset. And last but not least, the future proofness. It is not enough to simply put a solution at dispose at the customer's disposal, but uh, then see that the customer has changed requirements. Um, we always think one step ahead and see what might happen in future, what could be an issue in future, and that we factor it in today to avoid huge efforts later to provide new functionalities. One issue, for instance, or is uh, that we went for generic solutions. There are various data sets from the content serve system that we wanted to link but there may be others that we want to use later and this is why we built a dynamic solution that allows Rotenberger to use the new data and uh, um, uh, adapt the templates and the placeholders themselves. So this gives them a certain degree of uh, um, independence. Um, these were the factors that we focused on at the end of the day. And what does it look like now? Um, what do the catalogs look like? And I'll hand over back to you. Well, it needs to be said that uh, we invested almost one year of pre-work. Internally, we gave some thought to the templates and the whole implementation with you took one and a half, you know, max, max a year, three quarters of a year to be precise. And the results uh, are three types of catalogs, our main catalog, and uh, here, readily printed, it has 388 pages and uh, this is already available in German and English now. And the other uh, languages are to follow step by step. So this is now the content and translation job to finish it all off. The data is there, the catalog works. And the compact catalog is the second one. We didn't bring this one. This is uh, available. This is only sent out as a PDF. In terms of a cycle, the uh, main catalog is printed once a year. The compact catalog is issued um, one, two, three times a year, depending on how, uh, how often the prices change. The compact catalog is uh, distributed almost fully automatically. So the changes are really minor. The aircon catalog is a special thing. This is an extract uh, of the most uh, important products from the um, aircon segment of the main catalog. Yeah, I can hand it out. Uh, what circulation are we talking about? That's a good question. For German and English, we now have achieved 100,000, if I'm not wrong. The other countries, as I said, um, two more will follow shortly uh, as the next step. This is all country specific and this is not handled by Rotenberger Deutschland.
As Patrick rightly said, we also have the possibility to change the design. And this is uh, what we did for the main catalog uh, 2023. For many, many years, we've stuck to the same design. Now, in this context, we also changed the design. It is still very similar to the old uh, design, but uh, step by step, gradually, we will modernize it and also issue other formats. We have uh, dealer flyers that we can also handle with this then highlight flyers. So there are basically no limits to what we can do now. The basis is given now and we can easily scale it. For the main catalog um, that you do not 100% automatically what is the automation degree you have, the level? Yeah, we'll mention this a little later. We would say between 70 and 75%. This was a deliberate decision because we also have marketing segments in our catalog. Disruptors are still placed manually if you want to do some special advertising. But uh, this will also be updated. And for the catalog 2024, we will actually take it to the next level and increase the automation level even further. Maybe um, uh, doing a deep dive. Um, this is just the cover. So what do the product pages look like? And we've brought along this uh, double page here with two different grid sizes. One is a full page and one is a quarter page grid. And this is the basis, forms the basis for one double page for how the templates are to be created, which sizes we need. This is just one example. And uh, for this, uh, respective templates were generated, which look like this. We have product texts, we have assets, we have icons, and there are also various tables. Um, the exciting bit for the tables, they are flex tables from content serve. They are not, they were not specifically programmed or customized in the print suite. No, they are delivered one-on-one uh, -on -one by the content serve system. And Rotenberger and Basti has the possibility to adapt them right away if adaptations are needed. And how many templates do you have? Well, all in all, for the various grid sizes, uh, we have about 30 templates. And for the flex tables, we currently have five. And where do you lay down which uh, product goes with which template, which page? This is done by the product management. And they uh, decide where and when. Uh, for the project kickoff, um, uh, we did it in PowerPoint. Uh, we took a, pa a PowerPoint from PIN, built it in the PIN, built a channel. So we knew exactly the sequence. This was uh, green lighted by the product management. In future, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're anticipating matters. Uh, this will also be. Um, expanded and enhanced. Uh, it is laid down by PIM, the sequence. And the product management then decides which template is assigned. And this is going to be done in PIM? No, not in PIM. In the print solution. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, let's continue here. So these are the various grids and the various templates with all sorts of information available. And when you then actually fill this with the product data, then it could look like this. This is uh, the filled uh, double page with a variety of data. The grid sizes are, or the templates, the underlying templates are defined in such a way that uh, they will never surpass the size that they should have. So the uh, size is a fixed one, so there's no enlargement or no reduction. We work a lot with uh, magnets and uh, and with nails uh, so that uh, the images always stay within the grid. This ensures the size. Uh, in this is the manual share. You might say, well, there's lots of information for one specific product, but uh, we don't want to really advertise it that big. Then you have to make sure that the content um, is actually adapted to the space available. This is a deliberate decision uh, which size goes to which product. 
this is what the pages look like at the end of the day. A question on the double page. Are the uh, they assigned? Uh, are the attributes assigned to the image? Is this d dynamically uh, produced, or is it? Uh, no. In this particular case, we place the image and the texts, but the texts are not automatically placed the way they are now. Um, they are actually placed onto the image, and this is the manual share where the where the texts are really pushed in the right position because the texts are generated by the system them as well. Exactly. At the end of the day, what have we achieved with this project? Well, we've achieved a 75% automation level with this project. The product pages um, are completely built up. The uh, solution is in the InDesign desktop, the Comet desktop. So you can actually ret retrieve them from the product range. But there's also a version where we buy build lists, where several uh, products can be delivered uh, or distributed at the same time. And the uh, deliberate decision to uh, control certain things manually. But there is, of course, room for further automation. And we also heard that this solution is future-proof. Future proof. The print suite is a solid basis um, that uh, actually helps you to get to the next level very easily. And it's scalable at Rotenberger. At present, um, there's only a small group working on this uh, project, and uh, this can also be scaled, of course. Yeah, exactly. Then the product data for the data for the products come from the PIM. This is of essential importance. I heard it in the uh, presentation yesterday with Mr. Kaus. The uh, uh, where product uh, manager actually presented proposal for corrections in, in any type of, of format. But now the product manager knows, sees a mistake, can correct it in PIM right away. And this is all then automatically delivered in the catalog. And we only have one single source of truth now, the PIM. Uh, this is a very smart process we've defined. It works well and it's scalable to the countries and the brands. So the result is very, very positive. Of course, uh, uh, in terms of flex charts or flex tables and automation levels, there's still room uh, to improve, we know. But the Catalog 2024 is in the pipeline, and by then uh, we will have uh, all of this uh, app optimized as well. Uh, what is the outlook? How do we go from here? because we've reached a very good productive point of departure, but we would like to expand even further, go one step further. Um, internationalization. Uh, German and English uh, has gone live, has already been printed. Now there are two more countries following. They're still being, they're still translating. All others are also translating in the PIM. And then this will be distributed so that uh, we have the catalogs and can gen generate the catalogs in the respective languages. Excuse me. Is this? Uh, have you only worked with German catalogs so far in the U.S. and in India? Yes, yes, in part, yes. We just handed over the uh, um, open data, and they translated this manually. But this is all to be done in the PIM. This was the issue at the beginning. We only had article-specific uh, texts, which were all translated, but not the product-specific ones. This is now taking time, but the countries are happy that they finally have a basis uh, to build upon, and that we're all working with one and the same system. And uh, for the brands, it will be exactly the same. The uh, brands, we're still doing uh, some onboarding with the brands. And as a s next stage, they will have the semi-automatic um, uh, product generation. 
Um, we would like to upgrade to the workgroup scenario, not only the Comet West desktop, but also in the newness uh, uh, user interface and to do the replanning. Some uh, will have seen it yesterday because then this would render the PowerPoint solution obsolete. You could plan the products in the grid right away with this online tool. And this would mean that a product manager can see right away what happened, what it, does it look like when I place this uh, product um, and this means that uh, you can actually produce a catalog even faster. So these are the next steps for us. And with this, thank you very much for your attention. Are there any questions? How will you handle the language versions in future? SWOT uh, uh, change or completely new uh, distribution or upgrade or whatever. No, we will uh, distribute completely new. Uh, we have various product ranges for various countries. And in part, we even have country specific articles that are only sold in that specific country. And this is why we will create ch a channel per country so that they can work in the system independently and that each uh, country is responsible for its respective product range. Yes, yes, please. A general question. How do you see the future for your company? Print or digital? Does print uh, still play a role for you in future? Well, uh, I can only say print will continue to play a prominent role. In the beginning uh, of the, in the early stage of the product, uh, project, we said, do we still need a catalog? Do, you, do we need a catalog um, every year or every two years? Do we need it at all? Yes, we do need catalogs. We're in completely in the B2B area, in the B2B segment, and we only sell to other businesses. And we did a survey among our customers, and our customers also say they need the catalog, the printed catalog, even end users users say, if they sit in their companies, then they want to browse through a catalog, a printed catalog. This is the rule in, in this industry. It's Yes? For the internationalization, do you want to use uh, the ContaSurf uh, solution? Yeah, we've uh, attached a Deeple as a pre-translation tool. With Parsonate, there's another project uh, um, uh, referring to AI text generation. This could probably also be used for translation. It's all open. One question on the translation again. Uh, also, also embedding translation management systems, or do you still do tra traditional translation? No, no. We use uh, Deeple as a pre-translation tool in content serve. And the countries get a pre-translation displayed, the full translation, and then they actually correct it or they release it. When you have uh, centralized all of the data in the PIM and uh, the countries work on the channels, why are you planning uh, to uh, uh, work on the individual pages outside the PIM? Well, this is currently done outside the PIM because the script planning has not been introduced yet. This is to be introduced though. But um, the question is, what are you referring to? Um, if the product manager actually um, manages the data, then they have to change over to a second tool. Wouldn't it make sense to define this in PIM right away, the sequence of products? It is already uh, d done via the channels today. And as I said before, uh, it is so much more convenient through the web interface. In the contents of PIM, there is no such option for planning for product management. Okay, then, thank you very much.